Hi everyone, welcome back to the processes within the project management body of knowledge. This one in particular is planning scope management. Now planning scope management is where we are, we're within the, the project scope management knowledge area as we're going along on our project, but we're also in the planning process group. So we're planning our project and this particular process is we're actually planning the approach to how we will manage the scope. We're not necessarily gathering it just yet, but we're planning how we will gather it and the approach that we'll take to gathering and, and working with scope within the project. So plan scope management is the process of creating a scope management plan that documents how the project and product scope will be defined, validated and controlled. Those three things very important. How are we going to define the scope? How are we validating that it's correct? And how are we controlling it to make sure that it stays on track? Why do we do this process? Well, it provides guidance and direction on how the scope will be managed throughout the project. And this is very important. I've seen it uh, many, many times where a project will not have a process uh, outlined clearly for how they're going to gather the requirements and make sure that they are fit for purpose. And then they end up doing things just, uh, you know, in a willy nilly approach without any plan and things invariably go off track. So <laughs> if you if you have a plan up front, it's going to help you a lot more. And if it's outlined and everyone is clear, that's going to help you a lot more again. So the development of the scope management plan and detailing the project scope begin with the analysis of information contained in the project charter. So that's our initial document that we use to uh, initiate a project or kick off a project. And you know, it will have an idea of what we wanted to deliver in the first place, but it won't be really well defined. It'll be a high level idea. Now is the time that we're going to start getting into more detail. The latest approved subsidiary plans of the project management plan, historical information contained in the organizational process assets, and any other relevant en environmental and en uh, enterprise environmental factors like regulations or government regulations or standards and that sort of thing. Inputs, tools and techniques and outputs for planning scope management. We've got the project charter will need to be an input. The project management plan will be an input into this uh, and it will be ongoing as we're evolving over time. Uh, EEFs and OPAs of course. Tools and techniques that we'll use are expert judgment of people in various areas, maybe the customer as well, where we're actually going to be delivering this item or gathering the requirements from. Data analysis, so there might be alternatives to choose from, and we'll need meetings to facilitate and elicit all of this information from the people that we need. The outputs are the actual scope management plan or uh, the requirements management plan as well, which is sometimes called the business analysis uh, plan. And basically with the rise of the business an analyst role, you might be working with a business analyst and they might be doing this particular plan um, you know, and that will outline how they're gathering those requirements and how they're managing those requirements as the project goes along. As you can see, uh, the plan scope management goes, uh, is an input into the project management plan and Charter, project management plan, EEFs and OPAs are an input into plan scope management. Let's look at the inputs in a little bit more detail. The project charter, we'll see, we want to know the project purpose. So what was the actual high level purpose? The high level project description, because this will sort of give us a direction on how and where to gather those requirements. Any assumptions that were made? Uh, so, you know, maybe we assumed that something would be easy to get access to. Maybe uh, it's actually hard to get access to. We definitely need to know what we assumed when we initiated this project. Any constraints that were outlined in the project charter and high level requirements that were outlined when the project kicked off with the project charter. The project management plan itself will be an input into this and we'll have the quality management plan. So with our scope and where, when we're testing our scope, how did it go? Uh, you know, was, was it passed? Did it, did it meet all of the things that we wanted it to do? Were there any defects? This will need to feed back into our uh, planning scope management. We'll also need to know the development approach and project lifecycle description. So are we using agile or are we using a waterfall approach? Are we using a combination of the two? And that will affect how we actually move forward and how we do the work. EEFs for planning scope management include the existing organization's culture. This will affect things. So, you know, how is the work done? Is it done through formal, uh, 
formal templates or a project management office, or is it done through side or hallway conversations? The existing infrastructure and systems that are in place, any uh, programs that are in use already, personnel administration, how are we getting the resources for our project, and existing marketplace conditions that might affect us. Organizational process assets and templates might include pro policies and procedures, often either in a functional management environment where you're delivering the project to, or a project management office that has an idea of, uh, of the templates that need to be completed. Historical information and lessons learned. Uh, so previous projects, if you do have a lessons learned repository, then that's a very useful thing. You might get some tips on how something like this was delivered in the past. Tools and techniques for planning scope management. You will need your uh, access to the experts in whatever field you're delving into. So this could be experts on from similar projects. So how, how were things managed on similar projects? Can you get an idea from those people? And also information in the industry or the discipline uh, or the application area. So where you're delivering the product, product to or the project to, uh, the people in that area, they're the ex experts in that area and you might need to gather a lot of that expertise um, through the process of planning scope management. Data analysis will come into play, so there'll be alternatives to choose from. You might have a few different solutions as you go along, and you'll need to know the, uh, how to analyze or how you're going to analyze those alternatives. You can use for the various ways of collecting requirements, validating the scope, controlling the scope, or elaborating the project and product scope. So there'll, be, there'll always be various ways of doing that, and you'll just need to analyze those and choose the best one for your particular, particular project. Of course, to facilitate this, you will need meetings. One of the easiest and fastest ways when a meeting is run well, you can get an answer very quickly or get decisions and, uh, and even gather, gather those requirements very quickly as well. So project teams may attend project meetings to develop the project uh, scope management plan held with key stakeholders. For example, the project manager, project sponsor, project team members and selected stakeholders, or anyone responsible for any of the scope management processes, like your business analyst role, for example. We'll all get together and agree what is the process for gathering the requirements and making sure that they meet uh, what the customer wants. Now there are two outputs you'll see as part of planning scope management. And we've got the, the scope management plan itself. So that's the component of the project management plan. Now this becomes a piece of the project management plan right up here. And then you've got other pieces, of course, like risk, cost, schedule, quality, uh, procurement, and all of those things. And it describes how the scope will be defined, developed, uh, monitored and controlled, and of course validated to ensure that uh, the customer got what they wanted. Components of this plan include the process for preparing the project scope statement. So where we're going to make a statement about what we're delivering and uh, you know what's the process for preparing that. The process that enables the creation of the work breakdown structure from the detailed project scope statement. How are we going to do that? How are we going to break down that scope into the activities? Is it going to be a meeting? Is it going to be one person doing it? Uh, you know, who's, who's responsible for doing that? All of that can be outlined here. We need the process that establishes how the scope baseline will be approved and maintained. Who's going to be approving it? Is it the project sponsor? Does it need to be run past a steering committee? All of those things can be answered here. Pro, a, pro, a process that specifies how formal acceptance of the completed project deliverables will be obtained. So this is where we've got validate scope. That's that process. And uh, basically, how do we want that scope to be validated? How do we make sure that it meets what our customers want? Lastly, we've got the requirements management plan, and this is part of the project management plan, and it, it describes how project and product requirements will be analyzed, documented, and managed. And it could also be called the business analysis plan because of the rise of that BA role. This is where the BA or the business analyst might come on board and really uh, take this under their wing. And they will look at how the requirements activities will be planned, tracked, and reported. Uh, any configuration management activities, so what's, what parts of the scope will be baselined and how do we make a change? Any requirements prioritization processes, so which ones are we going to do first? Sometimes, you know, maybe it's based on cost, maybe it's uh, based on benefit, 
Maybe it's something else. How do we, we can put that here so that everyone is clear. We need metrics that will be used for the and the rationale for using them. So usually metrics around the benefits or metrics around which ones we're going to be doing first as well. And of course, the, the requirements traceability matrix and the traceability structure that reflects the requirement attributes captured on the traceability matrix. So this might be you know, uh, an identifier, and there's more detail on this later on in these videos as well, but you might have an identifier who, uh, you know, who raised the requirement, for example, um, what, what the actual requirement is, and then you know, a few more details, any risks or costs involved, and then ultimately the scope item uh, that, that meets that requirement. So all of those will go into a traceability matrix so that we're understanding that, uh, that we are meeting what the customer wants in the first place. And that is planning scope management.